Your Life in Sex Island, Chapter 2, in Praise of Professional Liars, page 38. Please remember, Professional Liar is a highly esteemed and very well-paid profession. They lied us into four wars, Iraq, Afghanistan, Pakistan, and Syria. Here's the timeline of how it was done. Bear with me, the first few entries don't seem on message, but think about it for a moment. 1950s, two planes hijacked from Cuba to America. 1960s, 50 planes attempted, most successful, only a few deaths, a few planes lost at sea, hijacked to Cuba, almost all from the U.S., average of five per year, one from Cuba to the United States. Cuba seems to be a more popular destination than the United States. No one, not the airlines, not the FBI, not the FAA, does anything to prevent hijackings, not even hardening the cockpit door. Oops, I'm sorry, they did too do something. They talked, officials talked, military officers talked, diplomats talked, politicians talked, media talked, editorialists talked, and talked. No one hardened the cockpit door. No one hardened the cockpit door. Duh! 42778. Military coup installs democratic, which is probably communist, government in Afghanistan. 12 7, 1979. Soviet Union, Russia, invited in by the democratic government, attacks Afghanistan, with whom they share a 3,000. 366 mile border, one and two thirds times longer than our border with Mexico. We, the USA, begin supplying the freedom fighters, Mujahideen, also known as Al Qaeda, also known as the Taliban, with billions of dollars of equipment, training, and support. Russia gets their ass kicked. 922, 1980, Iraq invades Iran. The United States supplies arms to the Iraqis. Kuwait too supports Iraq. 6, 1982, President Reagan stated that the United States, quote, could not afford to allow Iraq to lose the war to Iran, unquote. 1985, U.S. sells weapons to Iran. Yes, we were arming both sides. 1985 and 1986, Iraq and Iran exchanged some 700 missiles directed at civilian targets, most likely most supplied by the United States of America. 485 to 187, Soviets devise exit strategy from Afghanistan. Yeah, it took two years. 1986, Afghan constitution installed the Republic of Afghanistan, ROA. 8788, U.S. attacks Iranian oil platforms, destroying about a half a dozen platforms and sinking about the same number of Iranian ships. Another undeclared war instigated by the United States of America. 7388. U.S.S. Vincente's laying mines in Iranian territorial waters shoots down civilian Iran air flight 655 killing all 290 passengers and crew. Our professional liars, the corporate media, lie about it until the next news cycle buries it. January 87 to February 89. Soviets declare victory, withdraw from Afghanistan. Yeah, took two years. 725.90, the U.S. ambassador to Iraq, April Gillespie told Iraq that Washington, quote, inspired by the friendship and not by confrontation, does not have an opinion, unquote, on the Iraq-Kuwait argument. Quote, we have no opinion on Arab-Arab conflicts like your border disagreement with Kuwait, unquote. Naturally, Saddam Hussein took that as a go-ahead. Remember, we did not object when Iraq invaded Iran. Just 10 years ago, we helped. 
Sounds to me like a promise of non-intervention on our part. Yet another unkept promise. 8290, Iraq attacks Kuwait. January 16th, 91, U.S. attacks Iraq four and a half months later. 92 to 96, Afghan Civil War. 9901, the Mujahideen, also known as Al-Qaeda, also known as Taliban, our clients, gain upper hand in Afghanistan. Good, we kicked out the legitimate government. 1999 and 2000, flight trainers in the United States notify the FBI that Saudi citizens are learning to steer commercial jetliners but have no interest in learning to take off or land. The FBI does nothing. It does not notify the airlines. It does not notify the pilots. It does not notify the flight attendants. It does not notify airport security. It does not notify airport management. It does not notify local police. It does not put agents on planes. It does not harden cockpit doors. The FBI does nothing. 61501. U.S. warlords insulate themselves from the effects of war by eliminating the draft previously and giving themselves a tax break. 9-11-01, we are attacked by Saudi Arabian nationals by 19 men commandeering four commercial planes and flying them into the Twin Towers in New York and other targets. Fifteen of the men were from Saudi Arabia, two from the United Arab Emirates, one from Egypt, one from Lebanon. None are from Afghanistan. None are from Iraq. None. Not one. Surviving members of the group which planned the attack say that their group within the USA did all of the planning with no help, communication, or direction from anywhere else, including not from Osama bin Laden. 9-11-01 onward, having done nothing sensible thus far about air, port, or plane, security, we do not wish to break our ninny streak. We seemingly everywhere put in charge nothing but brown noses. Great job, Brownie. Bush to Brownie about the New Orleans Katrina Bush disaster. We install an inspection system that has failed every time that it has been tested. I am quite sure that I could bring a bomb on any plane that I chose to. The sole purpose of the inspection system appears to be to demonstrate to the American public that the government has the right to invade your most personal business, person, property, communications, and thoughts anywhere and any place that it decides to. Our Constitution guarantees freedom from unreasonable searches, and it certainly does. If the government decides to play with your balls or your wife's tits, you better spread your legs and loosen your wife's bra and smile. We have installed an inspection system which has and continues to cost billions of dollars and causes hours of delay for each person on each flight and serves no purpose except to intimidate the Americanus publicus bubis. The terrorist won. When my wife and I flew to Florida, they, the inspectors, confiscated her half-empty six-ounce bottle of oil of Olay. I was wearing a medical prescription catheter and a urine sac attached to the inside of my thigh, which was completely undetected. As it happens, urine contains all of the elements and many of the compounds found in most explosives, including percussion-detonated explosives. I had one sack of urine attached to one thigh. I could have had two large sacks of explosives, easily 20 pounds, attached to each thigh and gone completely undetected. That's the beginning of the timeline, but I have to stop now. Thank you for watching. If you like more, purchase the book, Your Life in Sex Island, by clicking the link in the description below. Thanks again.